a very good morning now we will start doing derivation of maxwell's equation we will try to separate out the two forms differential and the integral form and we'll try to physically interpret the meaning of each and every equation we are going to get so the very first maxwell's equation is divergence of electric displacement vector is equals to the volume current density inside it we can also represent it like this okay but we will start with what we know what we already know so from gauss law in electrostatics from gauss law in electrostatics you know that surface integral of electric field over a closed surface area s is equals to the charge enclosed inside that closed surface upon epsilon naught right then we did what we assume that let us consider that this charge q can be written as a distributed charge rho dv which is distributed over the volume enclosed by this surface s and from gauss divergence theorem from gauss divergence theorem we know that if you have a vector quantity let's say a is a vector quantity then the surface integral of this vector quantity over a closed surface is equals to the volume integral of divergence of this quantity okay we can write it in this form so this equation which is let's say our equation number one can also be written as we can also write this as divergence of electric field divergence of electric field dv integrated over a volume v is equals to see i have written q by epsilon naught as q ki jagah integration of rho dv by epsilon naught okay so far i have done only this now if you compare the terms over here if you compare the terms you will find that actually divergence of electric field is equals to rho by epsilon naught and indeed this is also a form of maxwell's first equation a first maxwell's equation but if we have homogeneous and isotropic material i would say homogeneous material jisme har disha mein permittivity is same okay we have permittivity same in all directions so i can just take this epsilon not and multiply it with the electric field so i will be left with epsilon not electric field is equals to the charge density okay therefore we know that epsilon e is nothing but electric displacement vector given by d therefore we get divergence of electric displacement vector d is equals to the charge density okay and this is your maxwell's first equation right so if it is asked in your exam that you have to derive maxwell's first equation you will have to actually start with gauss law in electrostatics okay and indeed maxwell equation or maxwell first equation is same as gauss law or we can say that gauss law is actually maxwell's first equation so maxwell stole it from gauss and said that this is the first equation of my theory okay this is the first equation of math so in maxwell's first equation this is the differential form
this is the differential form and this which is E dot ds electric flux coming out of a surface S is equals to Q by epsilon naught. This which is Gauss law is also Maxwell's first equation in integral form. Remember, divergence of a quantity or a vector quantity gives us specification of flux coming out of a particular volume enclosed. Also, E dot ds gives us the information about the flux of electric field lines coming out of a closed surface area S. So these two are indeed equal and as I said, I will also explain you the physical interpretation. The physical interpretation is the number of electric field lines passing out of a closed surface area S is equal to the charge enclosed inside that area by the permittivity of free space or whatever permittivity of the material you are having. Jahaka system So right now we have only free space, so I am calling this as epsilon naught. This epsilon will change when we have uh, the background conditions different. Right? So this is Maxwell's first equation or derivation of Maxwell's first equation. On the similar note, you don't have to do much for Maxwell's second equation because you know Gauss law in electrostatics, magnetostatics is given by. So Gauss law in magnetism or magnetostatics. is given by flux of magnetic field lines coming out of a closed surface area S is equals to zero. Isse hum ye bhi bolte hain that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Okay, magnetic monopoles do not exist. I'm using the same Gauss divergence theorem. You, you can write this as the surface integral of a physical quantity B dot ds can be written as volume integral of divergence of that physical quantity over the volume enclosed by the surface S and this is also zero because volume we cannot take as zero volume is already there magnetic field lines hai, koi volume to select kari sakte, non zero volume therefore this quantity has to go to zero and therefore we can say that divergence of magnetic field lines is zero so this becomes your differential form of Maxwell's second equation And this is the integral form. Integration is what we present. So we can say that this is an integral form of Maxwell's second equation. Okay. So we have four Maxwell's equation in total. One and second. First and second Maxwell equation depends on Gauss law in electrostatics and Gauss law in magnetism. Both talk about either electric field lines or magnetic field lines. Electric field line ka flex agar aapko pata karna, that is dependent on the charge enclosed by the permittivity and we have the divergence in the flux of magnetic field lines equals to zero. Okay. So this becomes the physical interpretation also that magnetic monopoles do not exist. If somebody is asking you what is the physical interpretation of Maxwell's second equation, you say that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Now we will move on to derivation of third equation or Maxwell's third equation. You know that magnetic flux density, Yarki, Maxwell third equation or Maxwell fourth equation, Yato flux density. 
if it is third equation it will be related with magnetic flux density and if it maxwell's fourth, fourth equation it will start with current density so we will we are doing maxwell third equation so we will start with the magnetic flux density so flux or the magnetic flux coming out of an area let's say is given by b dot ds we know that this is going to be zero now from faraday's law so we are not considering that it is a closed surface closed surface kick through up taking it it will be zero abhi what you are saying is let's say this is a magnet okay and let's say this is the north pole although there are not hard and fast distributions of north and south poles and let's say this is the south pole and field lines are coming out like this okay and what you have done is you are only concerned with this surface ki is surface se kitni field lines bahar aa rahi hai so we are calling that this surface is not a closed surface closed tab hota jab ye ek volume bound karta no it is not bound to any volume from faraday's law of electromagnetic induction if this is called as flux then time dependent variations in flux induces emf so you know that from faraday's law law kahe observation kahe of em electromagnetic induction if this flux varies with respect to time so let me call this as phi b the magnetic flux if you have phi b varying with respect to time del phi b by del t then the negative because of the opposite direction a flux or time varying flux induces an emf we have e is equals to minus del e phi by dt okay now if you use this equation and deri uh, take derivative of this equation with respect to time let us do this so let me call that this is equation 1 taking derivative of equation 1 with respect to time okay so let us do that it means what i have taken is del phi by del t it will be equals to del by del t of b dot ds okay over this open surface s no problem i can take this del by del t inside because my surface is not changing with respect to time only magnetic field is changing so i can take that integral over s instead of writing it like this i can write del b now this is a vector quantity the change in magnetic field with respect to time dot ds okay and if i take a negative sign of it if i take a negative sign then it will become equals to the induced emf okay so using the general definition of flux density and faraday's law in electromagnetic induction we have derived this relation that e is equals to integration of minus del b by del t dot ds okay also the flux induced is equals to e dot dl this you know from the definition or the relationship between voltages and electric field okay this you have got from because v is something like a volts or voltage so this relation we have got from relation between voltage and electric field because from the definition itself you say that electric field is volts per meter okay so if you multiply an electric field with length it will give you the voltage across that particular length fine it will give you the voltage across that particular length then we have a, let's say a closed loop 
तो कितना वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दिस लूप आई विल हैव दिस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो वी आर ओनली गोइंग माई मैथमेटिक्स आई हैव ईज इक्वल्स टू ओवर क्लोज कर्व इंटीग्रेशन ई डॉट डी एल एंड अफ यू थिंग्स नाउ इफ यू इक्वेट दिस इक्वेशन माइनस एल बी बाई डेल्टी विद द डेफिनेशन वी हैव जस्ट डिफाइंड फॉर ई यू विल गेट दैट लाइन इंटीग्रल ऑफ ई डॉट डी एल over the closed surface over the closed curve is equals to minus integration over the open surface del b by del t dot ds okay del b by del t dot ds fine now the only thing left is yahan pe integral with respect to length hai aur yahan integral with respect to area hai from स्टोक्स थ्योरम अगर आप स्टोक्स थ्योरम याद है तो स्टोक्स थ्योरम से वी कैन कन्वर्ट लाइन इंटीग्रल्स इनटू सरफेस इंटीग्रल बट द इक्वेशन वुड देन बी मॉडिफाइड लाइक दिस इफ यू हैव एनी वेक्टर क्वांटिटी तो उस वेक्टर क्वांटिटी का लेट्स से ए वेक्टर क्वांटिटी है उसका लाइन इंटीग्रल अक्रॉस अ क्लोज कर्व विल बी इक्वल्स टू the surface integral of curl of that vector quantity okay curl of that vector quantity across that open surface which is bounded by this curve so isse yahan ek open surface bound ho gaya ye dekhiye this surface is bounded by this curve wo across that surface if you take di uh, curl of the vector quantity given you will have this relation this is stokes theorem and if i apply stokes theorem for e dot dl what i will get is that actually surface integral of curl of e dot ds is nothing but equals to minus surface integral ye surface integral hi hai theek okay? so you don't worry about it you have minus integral of s del cross a dot ds i'm i'm very sorry this is not going to be this it will be indeed equals to jo abhi hum pehle likh rahe the it will be equals to minus integral surface integral of del b by del t dot ds so if you compare these two terms del cross e dot ds and del by del t dot ds ye in uh, सरफेस इंटीग्रल है तो वी कैन राइट टू डिफरेंशियल साइंस दैट्स फाइन बट इफ यू कंपेयर दिस एंड यू विल गेट डेल क्रॉस ई और कर्ल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस डेल बी बाय डेल टी ओके तो कर्ल ऑफ अ गिवन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस डेल बी बाय डेल टी एंड दिस इज मैक्सवेल्स थर्ड इक्वेशन Maxwell's third equation, and we have got it from where? We have got it from Faraday's law. It is nothing but same as Faraday's law. If you have time-varying magnetic field, then you will have space-varying electric field. Okay. If you have time-varying magnetic field, then EMF will induce across a space. So this is the physical interpretation of Maxwell's third equation. Now we are left with Maxwell's fourth equation, which we'll do in the next video.